Are you stealing chocolate? Do I have some chocolate? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can have the piece you already put in your mouth. And we're live! <laughs> With the second stream of the night! You know, Zena, wherever I go, you follow me, but you stop at the church. The great city of Rome. <laughs> Um, this is our second stream of the night. Our last stream was Sulina, which is from Pearl Games. Uh, and this game is coming to the U.S. market from Z9 Games, and it's in the European market from Abacus, Abacus Spiel. Um, so yeah. Steve, come join me. Play this game. That we enjoy. <laughs> I have to tweet. I realized I was going to check on the United States and some Oh, okay. Alright. Well, while well, Steve's doing that, we'll talk about this. So, this game was on my list of SN releases to look at um, because it uses like a card drafting, uh, interesting resource mechanism um and then you're building a city and how you place the cards in your city will depend on end game scoring uh which is pretty interesting we have now played this game twice at four player <clears throat> so this will be our third play but our first time playing two player so yes yes um this is one that I was on my interested list for Essen, which means that I had read the rules, but I wasn't super sure about it. And the reason I wasn't super sure about it is because it's very dependent on the cards in the deck. And so I wasn't sure what cards, uh, like what the distribution of cards were exactly and, and whatnot. And so I wanted to see and play it in real life to see if it worked. And so we played it in real life. And um, we really enjoyed it, which was really funny because, as I said in our last stream, it was like the most awkward game that we played at Essen. Um, we played a lot of games with strangers at Essen. We were playing with press and they were a little competitive. Well, so we're press. I'm press. He's an exhibitor when we go. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it was weird. They were very competitive. And like the one dude, I knew he was just going to win. And so like I was, I made a decision to do something that was a little less good for me, but, like, kept him from getting, like, an extra 10 points or something. And he got really upset that I had done that. And he was like, why would you do that? That, like, wastes three points for you. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> he's still, 10 points from you. He oh. still won handily. But, yeah, anyway. Um, the girls really want a certain thing, which I don't think we're going to give in and give them. Are we? Probably not. Give chocolate all over your lips. <laughs> I was going to kiss it off. This would just turn into that kind of stream. I mean, after streaming for five days, you never know what will happen. Oh, not that. I mean, I'd kiss you on camera. Are you Just give them the thing that they want. They want chewies. Um, while he's giving them chewies, I'll start teaching. So this game does look like Warsaw City of Ruins or just City of Ruins or Capital is what it's sometimes called. We actually haven't played it. We have it. It's right there. A lot of people have said it's somewhat similar, but this one's like easier to grok, I think, is, is what some of the comparisons have been made. Um, we'll see, because we will play Capital Warsaw at some point. But let's get into it and learn City of Rome. Um... Oh, that's what I could do as a solo stream. I have my trams, Tramways Engineering Training Bag. Um, okay, so we have the Essen promo, which is like, a, it's just a special shrine in game victory condition. I don't, I don't think we'll play with it. Um, but like I said, I haven't played this two players, so we're going to have to look to see what the modifications are for that. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Steve or Zeno dropped. Zena dropped it and UT came running. Yeah, because she heard the sound of a chewy dropping. Um, so there's that. But each player is going to get, um, because we're playing two player, each player is going to get. In my other one. Are we doing two pawns each? I think we are. Oh, oh but we have to play brown or white. Mm. 
Do you want to be brown or white? I'll be brown. Okay. So Steve's going to be brown. I'm going to be white. Um, Because in a two-player game, I believe we each need that. The insert is like, there's stuff, there's space for everything, but it's kind of unnecessary. Um, would you like some bit bowls? Well, it's not walking around, so. Um, and then, I, though I did save the insert mm -hmm. because I was uh, not bringing enough games home to warrant getting rid of the insert, just bending this card. Don't worry about it. Um, and then each player is going to need the... Oh, those are the promos, aren't they? Yeah, that's the promo. Each player is going to need the two starting cards um, for their player color. Uh, and then... I think that was a mistake, too. Then um, there are these point cards. You're actually only going to need the ones for the player count that you're playing with. So... Yeah, we only need these three. These are also the, like, game round... Triggers. Um, like, get a horrible mistake. These like don't fit too well there, so I think we're just gonna like leave them there. Then there are decks that have um, numerals on the back. So there's a one deck, a two deck, a three deck, and a four deck. And depending on the player count, we're going to remove a certain number of decks. So I believe we sh I should have prepped this before. Do we only play with three decks in two player? Or is there no reason? Um. Yeah, I drew the eight and then four value cards to the deck. I did that, but. These are. Big enough for the player counts. I don't know. Okay, the bricks don't need, you just, like, lose them. The bricks you don't really need bit bubbles for. Um, wow. Hey, Ichi. Um, okay. Hey, Ichi. You're gonna have to go fix that. Uh, Xena went and hid in the bedroom, and then was making chewy noises. It would have been faster if you went around. Um, so Ichi has gone to investigate, whereas if they had just been doing chewy noises... I'm not being around, that would be fine. Um, Alright. Did you baby get her in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Alright. Um, cool. Alright, so we're gonna we're basically gonna stack the deck. So... Hmm. There's not enough of these. So these are the only ones that are marked with two player, but there's not enough of them to, so you put four in for that. This is a great stream, yo. Oh, here we go. Two player game. Here we go. That'll help. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so you're going to shuffle the one deck. I am reading the section now. You can go away. You shuffle the one card deck, and you're going to count out four cards, and then you're going to put the four star card in between, and then you're going to count out, um, five, six, seven, eight, and then between the eighth and the ninth card, you're going to put the eight star, and then you're going to put the 14 value star at the very bottom. So the stars are like the end of the round uh, triggers and markers, so that's why it's important where they are. Then for the two-player game, we're actually only playing with the one and two deck, so the three and four deck can stay in the box. So you're going to shuffle the two deck, and then put it out beside the one deck. Then there are these thin boards. You're going to like randomize these. They're double-sided as best you can. And then there's a gold pond and a silver pond. You're going to pull those out. And that's actually everything you need from the box for a two-player game. If you're playing uh, with three or four players, you'll use uh, more decks, and you'll also have more, like, interim things. But it's not super complicated. So we shuffle these best we can, make a stack, and then we'll put them someplace. And then we're going to put the 
The gold or the silver? I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll put the gold one at the front. This just marks that it's the front. And then this silver one's going to be the uh, first player marker that we'll pass out. Okay. So we're going to put the ducks somewhere in the center. Each player is going to start with five money. We're only going to play over seven rounds instead of 14 rounds, which is the normal game. But 14 rounds still goes pretty fast. Um. Oh, but we're playing seven rounds, but we have two clients. Yeah, well, because we're gonna put two of each of these yeah. decks out, um, each phase. Okay, so. Um, cool. So the two buildings that we both started with. Just want to see if there's anything else that we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're rebuilding Rome. I see. It says an object of the game. Not just building it, we're rebuilding it. Yeah, after one of the many times it was sacked. Um, <clears throat> it's a thing. Mm. Okay, cool. Everything is the same. Okay. We just are going to have two pawns. So we're not playing with the Essen promo, which just adds another starting card to your hand, which is a uh, in-game victory point card. Ooh, what's the starting condition? Let's determine that, and then we'll actually start teaching the game. The last player to lay bricks in Rome. Yeah. Oldest player. All right, old man. Wow. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think Ohaimi was trying to explain it to me. You were. I didn't see it. Also, welcome back, everybody. All right. Goodbye, uh... Oh, okay, they're saying ciao in the other way. So we each have two starting cards. Uh, these are actually part of our city, so you're just going to put them someplace adjacent to each other. So they need to be orthogonally adjacent. They can't be diagonally adjacent, but it doesn't super matter where you're you build, put them. You're pulling in a 4x4, four four, so it can yeah. be in any orientation. Yep. Yeah. So I'll do this way, and Steve will do that way. Okay. So... Let's start teaching. Uh, cool. So we are rebuilding <clears throat> Rome. We're in a mm, in a three or four player game. You're gonna play across fourteen rounds, uh, getting one card every round, uh, building a four by four, basically city of Rome. The cards that you gain, you'll gain from here, and we're gonna draft them, and we'll determine <clears throat> turn order by. We basically will first select uh, resources that we want slash turn order, and then we will draft them in that turn order. So, then at the end of the game, we'll gain points based on the layout of our city, in addition to any points that we might have accrued during the game, which are the blue tiles. Um, yeah, there are four types of cards. There are residency cards, which are the white ones. They have, like, dormitories, apartments, that kind of stuff in them. And then there are, I call them engine cards. They're meant to be, like, farms or production uh, places. Those are the green background ones. Then the light green background, I should say. Then there are uh, temples, which have a purple background, and those are victory condition cards. So those come into play at the end of the game, but they're very important. You have to get them during the game so that you score points. Uh, and then there are entertainment cards. And the entertainment cards mm -hmm. are, uh, there are four different colors of them. And they will provide you either points or some sort of benefit during the game. But they actually will multiply the value of your residency um, sections at the end of the game. So your residency buildings actually don't score you any points at the end of the game unless you have built entertainment cards adjacent to them. And the more different types of entertainment you have, the more points you'll get because it's a multiplier for unique types of entertainment. So, let's get into teaching more thoroughly, now that I've, like, given a gloss. So what's going to happen is the starting player, in this case Steve, uh, because we're playing two-player, we're each going to have two pawns. In a three- or four-player game, you're only going to have one pawn. And so on your turn, you select where you want to be on this track. This is the front, where the gold pawn is, is the front of the track. And your position on this track will determine how many resources you gain during that round, in addition to the turn order that you will have for the drafting phase. Before we select, um, we will put out normally one card from each deck, 
But in the two-player game, we're playing seven rounds, because we're going to get two cards every round, and we're just going to put two cards out from each deck. Oh, and Aquifers. I forgot about Aquifers. Aquifers are blue cards, and they're a set collection bonus. They're also not another name for seals. Okay. Aquifers. Aquifer. Can you play this solo? Ah! Can you play this solo? I think it's yeah. It's two to four. You're out of luck. You're stuck playing with me. Damn it! I'll just play Tramways Engineer, but okay. So, guys. Oh yeah, we could play along Tramways. Um. Aquifers. Sorry, because you were explaining Aquifers. Yes, I was. So, uh, for teaching purposes, I will be both Steve and myself. <laughs> So, in this situation, Steve would go first, so he would select, oh, say he wants to go here. Uh, then, for uh, my turn, don't we start with a card in our hand? No, we don't. That's only if you play with the promo. Um, then I would get to go, because we're going to alternate a la tennis style, and I would say, oh, I really want to go here. Uh, and then Steve would be like, no, you don't. And then I would be like, yes, I do. Okay, right, or we could put, you know, I could be like, I went here, because on your turn, the number of bricks that you earn is the number of bricks between, uh, that are the one that you're on, and then anything between you and the uh, gold icon. So, I would start, because I'm, in, I'm closest to the gold, so that means that I get the first card, so I get to draft first. So I'd be like, sweet, I'm going to draft this one first. So it's going to go into my hand. Then, after I have drafted a card, I can build the card. So to build the card, every card has in the upper left corner, it says, uh, it depicts the number of bricks, either like one through three bricks, that you need to build it. You actually don't have any bricks or resources. So the only way that you can get them is from this track. So because I was here, I'm on one brick. There's no other bricks between me and the gold dude. I only have one brick, but this only costs one brick to build, so I could be like, sweet, I'm going to build it. When you build a card, it needs to be placed adjacent, orthogonally, to a card that you've already placed. So you just can't place diagonally. Um, so I would just be like, I'm going to place here. All of the rules, um, all of the cards have very simple uh, placement rules, right? With the exception of the aquifers, they have a special placement rule. Aquifers have to be the only aquifer in their row and column. So you play a little, like, Sudoku with this. So if I put this aquifer here, here, this can be the only aquifer in this column uh, in addition to this row. And I'm building a 4x4, four four, but the shape of that 4x4 four four could change, right? So this could end up being a corner, this could be the middle, you know, it depends on what I decide during the game. Then it would be Steve's turn. Steve gets to draft a card. He's going to go for the other aquifer, because giving me two aquifers is a bad idea, because it's a set collection. The more aquifers you have during the game, the more points you get. If you have one aquifer, it's only worth four points. If you have two, or it's an aqueduct, not an aquifer. That's very different. Yes, it's, it's an aqueduct. Aqua if you have two aqueducts, you get 12 points. If you have three aqueducts, you get 24 points. And if you have four aqueducts, you have 40 points. So, Steve's going to take this one. He'll put it there. But there's a catch with the aquifer. I already talked about it. Oh. Um... So he can do that because he is here and there is a brick between him and gold. He also would gain a gear. Gears allow you to activate your production places. And the cost, the number of gears that you need, is depicted at the bottom. We both start with a farm that needs two gears to activate. And if it activates, it gives us a coin. If Steve really wanted to activate that farm, he only has one gear. He could pay a coin to basically say the coin is the second gear, but he only would get a coin for activating it, so it's, it's washed. There's no reason to do that. However, if you have multiple production cards in your city, they will all produce with just two gears. So sometimes it's worth it, even though you might just get the coin back, because you might be producing other things like points or stars or bricks or things like that. So that is the production buildings. Then... Uh, to help keep track of turns, you can take these back when you draft. Then it would be Steve's turn again. Steve um, will take this yellow card because the primary big bright colors, these are the entertainment cards that make 
your resident square's worth points at the end of the game. So let's say Steve takes this card, and he wants to make sure it is adjacent to one of his residencies, so he'll put it there. However, Steve's pawn is on one brick, and then there's another brick between him and the gold, so he has a total of two brick. So he's short one brick, because this card requires three brick to build it. He can pay two coins per brick that he is missing. So he could pay two coins to have that third brick so he can legally build that. If he wasn't able to legally build that and he didn't want to build it this turn, he could keep it in his hand um, to play on a future turn per chance. But if you do that, you're going to end up with a gap in your city, which there's no negative points for having gaps in your cities, but you're going to lose the potential to have points in your city, if that makes sense. Um, so that was that turn. So then it's my turn. Um, I get this card because it's the only thing left. I actually have three bricks and two production. So I could build this just straight out if I wanted. This is a temple. Temples give you points at the end of the game based on different stuff. So this one, I would get two points per, um, size two residency building that I had in my game. Um, my city. So maybe I just put this here because it doesn't really care about adjacency. Um, and then there's a little star depicted on the card. Certain cards will give you stars for different conditions. If they're just printed on the card, you just get a star. So I'd be like, sweet, I get a star. And I hold on to the stars. The stars are important in a minute. In addition, um, I had excess brick. I don't get that excess brick. It's, it's use it or lose it. Yeah, or just if you can get Xena to come out here, that would be a solution to that problem. Maybe just baby gate at the kitchen. So if Xena comes out, we can see it. I don't get any of the access brick. It's easy to lose it. Um, but I do have two cogs, so all of my production things will produce. So I would just get a coin. And that would be the first round. I would get this back. Then at the end of the round, we take this tile. We flip it over. Maybe rotate it. Up to us, I guess. Uh, but you definitely need to flip it at least, and then you put it under, and now we have a new resource tile. And whoever goes first will alternate. So then we would put two more cards out. Yay, learning times! So then we put two more cards out, and then we would do it again. This star is revealed, and at the end... A star is born. When, um, when we've finished this turn and drafted these cards, right, and we've placed them, woohoo! Um, we now resolve the star. So when you see the star, it just means that there's a star around coming. It's not until you go to like remove the star that you resolve it. And the way that you resolve it is whoever has the most star tokens gets the star. It's that simple. However, whoever has the most star tokens, they gain the star, but they have to discard all the star tokens they have. And at the end of the game, every star token is point. However, the stars that you get in the middle of the game they are worth points, but this is only worth four points. So if I had the most stars because I had, say, six stars, I would actually be losing two points to take this card. So it's a little bit of a balancing act because you can get stars for doing various things in the game, but you want to make sure that you don't have so many stars that you're definitely going to win this, which may or, not, may or may not be less than the number of stars that you already have um, because you have to discard all of your stars. Um, so yeah, but sometimes maybe it's worth it to uh, have the most stars, because maybe in that case, maybe I only was the one with the star, and so by having the most, I just discard one star. So it's one of the things. The game ends once all of deck one is gone, um, because we'll have the 14 star revealed to us, and we will uh, resolve the 14 star, which is worth 14 points again. Uh, and I'm going to shuffle these back up, give Steve that back, there we go. In-game scoring is kind of complicated. It's like, yeah, it's pretty complicated. So let's see if I can fake it with these cards. Um, I can't because I won't have a full-size city, but I can maybe fake it enough to give you an idea of what's going to happen. So, yeah, this will work. Um, at the end of the game, we're both going to have a 4x4. Four four. Um, and certain some of these cards that I'm putting down will actually like give me points when I put them down. But um, for expediency purposes, we're just not going to worry about it. Hey, look, it's not a legal board, but whatever. Let's say the game's over and we're going to score this bad boy. So 
the resonance these are multipliers so first thing um when you have residency cards that are adjacent to each other at the end of the game if they are the same size residency they combine so they will add up so this is no longer two sets of this is no longer a set of two size two residencies this is one size four residency so then i have basically four points right here and then i multiply that four times the number of entertainment locations adjacent so they have to be touching so i would only get one times four points however if this wasn't here and i had it like this this would be worth zero points it would be four times zero points so you always want to make sure that you have your residencies next to entertainment if i had another entertainment card here it would need to be a different color so I couldn't put another yellow one here. I mean, I could put another yellow one. It just wouldn't be worth any points. But if I had like a blue one here, I would actually get two times four. In addition, I have this little residency down here, which is all by itself, but it's a size two. So I would get two times one for that. So for these residencies, I would get four times one and then two times one. So I would have six points for those residencies. And I could keep growing this residencies. So like if this two is over here instead, I would get six times one. Okay. And if I had like an entertainment way over here, it would it would be six times two, right? So the maximum that you can multiply a residency location by is four because there are four different entertainment type buildings. Um, but that is that. Otherwise you do the aqueduct scoring and then you do temple scoring and then you'll get one point for every victory point token that you just have. That's a lie. Oh, this game. Um, so there are certain cards, it's like really good, but it's, it's tricky to teach. There are certain cards, I don't have them here. When you play them, you will put a certain number of these tokens on the card when you place it, and then those tokens will be added. They're just added to your score, but they're added to every residency that is touching that temple. So if I have two residencies touching the temple, this isn't a temple, it's a bad example. I don't actually have one of those temples that does that. But pretend, um, at the end of the game, basically, this is what was happening. Um, if this residency was scoring me points and this residency was scoring me points, this temple would give both of those residencies an additional two points, but after the multiplication phase. So this one is worth two points because it's one times two, plus another two, so it would be four points. Um, if I had this going on, right, it would be four times one, so I'd get four points, and then plus two because of that temple. So the more residencies you have touching these temples that give you points, the more points, the more you'll benefit from those. So it's a thing where you have to really pay attention to placement for um, adjacencies to residencies. And that's where this game gets like sticky brain burny is yeah. where all of the adjacencies will sync up and matter. Because you'll like save spots and you'll be like, man, I really want to put a residency there because it's super important and then you're like ah, i'll just put an entertainment there and then you realize that you made the wrong decision yep. and it's awful and in four player draft drafting order i mean like any drafting game you might not get something that you're going to want to place in the spot that you left open for your favorite player if you're going last in the short order in like a more yeah. multiplayer game this it should be well we'll see because there's only seven rounds of drafting so it is a surprisingly long teach for something that's so quick, but it's one that we're like, Steve and I both know this game now, and so we can play it yeah. pretty fast. Um, and usually when I'm teaching in real life, I build a pretend city with like a whole deck, and it makes the in-game scoring teaching a little easier. But, yeah. I also explain, like, as people have questions when cards come out, I can, like, explain them more to them, but I'm not technically playing with you all, and so I can't tell you what cards you'll get. On that delightful note, let's just start playing and explain stuff as it comes out. So I start. So I <laughs> pick drafting with drafters in order first. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that. Oh. That was one of the things that I wasn't sure about with this game was uh, when we first looked at getting it was because of the fact that so much of it is card driven it was really hard for me to gauge from just the rules how it would play so we had to go play it and then playing it we learned that each of the like when you play with more players these decks all have like a very similar distribution so 
um, the likelihood that you'll get cards is spread out between the numbered decks. I'm going to take this Aqueduct. Yeah. So I I pay two coins um, to pay for the brick that this Aqueduct costs, and I'll put it there. And then I actually produce a coin, so that works for me. Um, and then this is completely ridiculous, this one. I'm going to pay... You have to pay two coins. I gotta pay two coins for the first one anyway. So yeah, I pay two coins to get this one. I'll put it there. So I can activate. But you do have two gears. Yeah, so, so can I activate now? Yes. So they both activate. So you get two coins and you get a brick. Yeah. The question is, am I going to do another activation? Yes. So your brick goes on, the cards that produce brick have a little slot for the brick to go on, and they can hold max one brick. So it's the only way that you can, like, bank brick. So I take that, and then I take this back, mm -hmm. and now I have two, two bricks, bricks, so I can get either of these using my store brick or using yep. this. I think I should probably get this one, because who doesn't love an engine? Damn. So then I produce again with my two gears, and I get three coins and one brick. Holy moly, this is different in two-player. Yeah, it's faster. Yeah. I'm gonna get that bad oh, boy, no, yeah. which is three brick. Oh, but I can't use that extra brick. No. That I got. So I'm just rolling it. Yes. Um, I have three brick from the resource, so I slot this in. It's really rough to slot in now, but um, also I produce, so I get a coin. But basically, when you place this coin or card, um, for every card that's adjacent to it, you get to draw a card plus an extra card, and then you get to keep one of those cards. So. Um, I only put it next to one card, so I get to draw one card plus one. You can never draw from the one stack, because mm -hmm. that's the game timer. So I can only draw two cards from here. I pick which one I want. I want that one, and I discard the other one. Pure logic joke, the teaching time of this equals an entire game of playing the river. Basically. It's not too far off. Okay, and then I will start the game. And, and... we put two more out, and Steve will rotate and flip the tile. Sure, so we need to do that close to camera. I guess mine can go over a little more. Where do we go? Maybe we do more like more like this. <clears throat> need a little bit more spice, you know what I mean? You know what I mean. You know that space. I do like space. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Star power. Ooh. And you have a little engine going. Uh, I will go... I'll go there to start. Yep. Yeah. Well, no reason not to. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help. Alright, your turn. I'm going to pay brick and two coins to add to mine. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to pay a brick to activate, or a coin to activate your engine? Your engine is hey, broke. Coin. I'm going to lose. I get um, three coins, get my brick back, and get a star. Yeah, I'm kind of worried. That <laughs> you're too powerful? Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Um, cool. Take that back. Plebeian. Um, I am going to do this, which only costs a brick, and I'm going to slot it right there. Um, and I will not pay a coin to activate my engine, because I would just, you know, not be worth it. Then I get two, two bricks and a coin. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take this temple. T -t 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 temple. Uh, which is two bricks, but I have two bricks. Cannot lie, you other brothers. Can't deny. I'm gonna put the temple here. Um, and it gets me two points for every two size residency that I have at the end of the game. So, there's that. Uh, and then I take this back. And then I will take this. Activate my engine again. Oh, and I get a star from my temple. And Steve will get two stars from his so temple. I get three coins, a brick that I can't beat. I give you your two stars. Yeah, from that. Okay. 
And then we resolve this bad boy. So Steve has the most stars. Uh, he has four stars. So, so he gets the four card. And then he just holds on to it or puts it someplace. All right, it's got a four on the back. Okay. Uh, that goes back. Um, that moves. Can you flip the thing? And I will put out the next four cards. This is like way faster in two player. Yeah. Which is amazing. Wait. Mm. You start. This is technically, Hero Logic says this is a Steve Tile play. This is a tile laying game with Steve Tile CC, which is true. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you definitely schooled me the first time I played this in completely neglecting to build an engine. So I've been. So now he's focusing just on engines, so I'm curious if I'll win. I he's do focusing. not have point generation, so yeah. um, I am. He's rich, but. You've got a lot of good that'll do me. I think coins are a point each. <laughs> they are, though. Yeah, so every coin you have is a point. So you do have point generation in that regard. Um, oh, that is straight up generating two points a turn. Can you write them? Now you're here. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna take this card because I need it desperately. You do. And then I'm going to play this card to right here. Uh, which only costs a brick, and I have a brick, so that's fine. That's your turn. Well, I do things. Among the stars. Ugh, oh, I liked that game. But the two player wasn't great, and we yeah. got rid of it before they it's came out with the two player one, and then brick. we didn't want to get the two player one after. Cause, and I have. You know. Okay, so I'm good with that. So I place it here. Right, those three bricks. Mm -hmm. And I generate three stars from that. Um, and then I can run my engine if I pay two coins, and I should. Two coins, one coin. It's one coin per gear. Oh, I'm on the first slot. Oh, oh, sorry. So I pay two coins, and then I get back three. You do get points break. for colorfulness. The more colorful, the more points, because the big the big primary colors are actually points. Those are the point generators. Um, okay, and then I have two bricks, because I need that brick. Um, so... That's seven points if I get four. But I need my regions. I'll try that. And then I will run my engine again to pay one coin and then get back two more. I'm not using this I should, but Alright, I'll take this card in my hand because it's my only option, and then I have three brick and I do produce my engine. Um, I don't want to lay that yet. This game is really moving fast. I think the game is going to be faster than the teach. I'm going to lay that. Uh, so I get a coin because uh, for every card adjacent when I lay it, I get a coin. And then my engine activates, which gets me a coin. And then that's... Is Carcass on the city, the two-player one that we parted with? with no, the that's wall? the castle. That's Carcass uh, okay. on the castle. I don't think... Or maybe it is Carcass on the city. But that is the one that we got rid of, yeah. Um, because I... it's a tile placement game in a restricted area. So you were much better I than I was. I was much better than it. you were, but, um, yeah. Oh, I uh, used to. And did we flip this? No. That's your job. I'm doing my job. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Jaime likes the kind of games, uh, or likes this kind of game, but as a result, uh, they're having a hard time wanting to add it to the collection. They already have Among the Stars, Fields of Green, Suburbia, Castles of Mad King, Ludwig, Isle of Sky, and Queen Domino. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the city... Oh, no, the city is you have... You build the wall around it. That is different than Castle. Okay. Oh. Oh, I haven't played that one. That's cool. Um, okay. Very dangerous. You go first. Mm-hmm. Well, we're out of out of out of beautiful alignment. I'm gonna have to go there. Just throw it. Just throw your pine. Go home, pine. You're, you're a little. You're an eater. Alright, speaking of which. I think AC needs some water. Alright, I'm going to take the aqueducts mm-hmm. because okay. we need it. Uh, and I'll put it there. It's such a bummer that I have to put it someplace that messes with my mm-hmm. dudes. <sighs> Actually, if I want to manage to do the cool aqueduct, I need to put it there. Um... Because I've locked myself in. But to do it, I have to pay... Uh, I have no brick, so I have to pay two coins to get the brick. I do have an engine, but it's not... I have one cog, but it's not worth activating the engine for, for me. So. Hey, I was done. I was talking still. Mr. Kairos. Sorry, I'm just so Mr. Excited. Steve Tile CC. <laughs> pay brick. I wonder if you would be good at retailing the bathroom. Oh. Hey, Brick, get this. Put it there. Pay a coin to do shenanigans. Yeah. And there's yeah, a point this is, I don't know. I'm not going to say this is broken, but I did get these very early. I let you get a little too many. Well, two came out the first turn. Yeah. So. Oh, and a star. That is what you are. You know what that must know that star is. Oh, and this had a star on it. So we got another star. Uh, I can build this temple. But do I want to? If I, it's when I build a 4x4, four four, it's 10 points. So. Isn't there a thing where you. you can not get a card and there'll just be a hole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could not build. You still get the card. It just goes into your hand. So. Oh, we, oh yeah. Weren't we supposed to start with the hand? No. I already said that. You only get a hand when you play with the Essen Promo. Because I remember when we played our first game, we had a hand with like one or two cards in it. We do. We dropped. We failed. We dropped cards to start. This whole game's fake. This whole game's wrong. I'm sorry. We start, uh, we dropped a starting card to start the game with, but only and one And then so you only have two cards, you'll have two cards in your hand? Um, yes. Normally, and then you can only No, you just have one card in your hand. Well, sorry, I mean that you draw, and then you have... When you draw, you can place either card. Yes. Yeah, yeah so yeah, you yeah. have two cards in your hand. Yeah. Um, and we, we would have pulled from the two deck. Changes everything. I think we just have to restart. I think I think we just it's Wait. only fair. Oh, it's fine. It's an asterisk game. I'll put a big warning on the thing that we forget to do that because I know people will leave comments about it. Do we want to draw hand now? We can. Yeah, it's the two side here. We'll draw from the bottom. Do we want to do it at the end of this round? So. Yeah, we'll do it at the end of the round. But we just draw the number of cards for the number of players, and 
you... You snake draft two. Oh, you snake draft two? Oh, no, sorry. No, just one. Draw a number of buildings equal to one. Yeah. Choose one to add to your pan. But it starts with not the first player, so you would have started. So we'll draft these two after I decide where I'm placing this damn temple. I was so concerned about the... So concerned about the two-player variant, I forgot the the hard the hand draft. I missed it up with the SM promo. Uh, I don't want to do any of this. I'll place that there. Okay, Steve, place your temple. Uh, Kabuki Kid played quadro. Well, the rules are gone now. Uh, <laughs> Kabuki Kid played quadrilopolis. Um, the first time they weren't into it, the second time they played the advanced side of the board, it's much better. Yeah. Two more steps. The yeah, side the is... advanced side of the board is much better. Oh. And then, do I want to activate my demon engine again? Okay, fine. Get two points. Literally just gives you points. No, I got my reasons. Okay. Alright, discard all your stars. And you get that. And then you draft first. Alright, this game is a lie. We should play again after. It's so fast. We should play again. We should just play again. Yep. I saw it. I saw what you what you didn't give me. Yeah, I just I couldn't. Okay. Do your do your duty, Kairos. The duty has been done. It is a done, done duty. Oh, hey, look, another engine card. Oh, man, I can't let you have that. Rock in a hard place, that's me. Do you start? I start. No, you start. Oh, you really can't let me have that. There's no reason for me to have that. Kabuki Kid preferred Suburbia to Quadrilopolis. We really like Suburbia, but like, with the app, the app does all the map math for us, so we got rid of our Suburbia. We had a lot of it. I think we had most of the expansions, but for two player, it's just so much setup um, yeah. for math. And uh, the scoring, I remember, the adjacency like like activations were just... Alright, you start. It's like the only reason I have an iPad anymore is for the games. You know what we should do? We should get a big iPad. We should trade in both of our little iPads and get one of the big ones. Oh, yeah. And then we could put the games on it. Um, and then like the reading And then it's just, it's a, it's a board game reading. It's not a bad idea. Um, am I on a brick? Yeah, I'm on a brick. We should go to, to an Apple store though and, and like, um, they're huge. Okay. I'm going to pay two, two coins, get a third and a brick. For like their own computer. You didn't take the engine. I'm so confused right now. What does it even mean? It means I get an engine. Yep. Hey, look, I finally got an engine, Mom. Um. I'm gonna put that right there. That's all I get. And then I need to pay a brick. I let you get an engine. Yeah, I was debating between taking that and oh, that. Oh, and then that. plus an extra point? Wow, so there's three points on that. So that one, when you place it, you gain one victory point per every three tile adjacent. Point. When you place it, plus one. So if you yeah, put three victory points on more. it, and that'll add the points to his thing. Um, well, I get this POS, which I don't want. And I can play it. I have enough everything. Oh. If I played it to there, it would make that worth four points. But if I put another thing on it, it's worth four points. So it's kind of moot. But if I play it, I actually get four dollars. Which means I'm a lot mm -hmm. less restricted in what I do. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Because I get one coin for everything that's adjacent to it. Oh, but not an additional. Oh no, plus an additional coin, so it's four points. 
And then I have two thingies, so my engine activates, so I get one of those three bricks. And then I also get another coin. And then that's the round, so I get that. That back. Do you do day? Oh, it's an aqueduct, and I go first. Alright. Oh, it's another wow. aqueduct! Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, this geez. round is perfect. It's beautiful. I love it in every way. Except for I realize I don't. <laughs> I really want residencies to go certain places. This, which one is the one that describes all the powers? This one. No. Maybe. I think it's this one. Golden reference. That's the one, one point for every star printed on the cards. It's so broke for you. It's so broke. It's so broke. Yeah. No. Alright. Taking an aqueduct. Taking the aqueduct that has a star on it because, yeah. duh. Um, so if I put a residency here, it's worth a lot more points. So I'm gonna put the aqueduct here. Ah, oh, but that's the only place I can put this aqueduct if I get a fourth aqueduct, which is worth way more points if I get the fourth aqueduct. And I haven't played this game enough to card count to know. But if I put it here, I can't put one here. I have to put it there. <laughs> there's, okay. This is why I have like to put game. I have to put one here regardless. This is Sudoku. Yep. So I'm just gonna put it there and it'll be fine. Um and that's my turn. And then pay my brick. I get this. And a star. That is much easier. Uh activate my engine. Pay a coin. Get two more. It's just it's a little ridiculous. Get a brick. Okay, well, he gives me that aqueduct. Yeah. Slot that bud boy in. Actually, I have two bricks. I have three bricks. Yeah, I know that's what it was. I need that. All right, that's my turn. Steve, get the thingy. That I don't think no, you actually want any. I don't. I wanted to put a two structure here, but. Here, I Logic. Really the only place I can put it, so. Says that you place tiles and the colonists, and he really did place the colonists. Uh, I like the colonists, too. This doesn't. So, does this. This. Does this still buff that, even though there's already a blue next to it? Yeah. No. It will give it its points, That's but it I mean. won't it, multiply it. It'll still get the points, though. Yeah, but it won't multiply it. There's a scoring example on the back of that that has that exact example. Do you see it? Where the two blues are pushing oh, the one yeah. into? Yeah. Plus, oh no, plus number of point tokens. You choose four. the blue building with the most point tokens. Right? Yeah, so you don't get both point tokens. You only get one. Yes. Huh, okay. Then spicy, I don't... spicy. You doing your stupid engine? Uh, yeah. Do I have all the gears? So. Alright, do your duty. You start. You like shove the whole thing over and I always correct it. I messed up. Don't I messed care. Messed up. Don't hard. care. It's the best part about this game. I know. Take your turn. Messed up. Hard. Take your turn. Oh, actually, I just go there. Yeah. Why would I not? All right, start. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, what else am I going to put there? I'll just that one away. Alright, I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to build it, and we'll put it right there. And then, uh, that's that. 
And then it doesn't matter which of these take except for to deny him one. But it doesn't matter because neither of them will get him points. The only thing is that one gets me a star. If you place it. Okay. Yeah, so I will take that. And then for me, it is literally not, it like does not matter what I play from my hand. Because none of them will get me points at the end of the game. But this one will get me three stars mm. when I place it. Oh, and I would have gotten a star when I placed that off of that. So I actually have four stars. Which, I know he has more stars. Doesn't matter. Um, there's no reason for me to produce an engine, so. Done. Well, there's no reason for me to do anything. But, the people want a bathhouse. They're just a really cleanly people. So I will take this and put three on there. Uh, the three of those. I will activate my engine. So I get three more coins. Can't use a brick, but I will get one star. And I think that's the star I needed to beat you. It's it, close at least. The pen I want is so far away. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I have five stars. I have five stars. Hey, how many stars do you have? I have seven stars. Okay, discard all your stars to get stupid amounts of points. Also, it's possible that I've cheated this whole game and my victory was taller than me in this. I mean, we did forget the hand drop thing, mm -hmm. but. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. So, points for your size two residencies. So, I have a cluster of three of them right here, so it's six times two, so that's 12 points. And then this one is all by itself. Just times one. Oh no, also times two. Mm -hmm. So that one is four points. So I have ten points from my size two residencies. Six times two is twelve. Yeah, you're right. That's I have fourteen points. It's alright. I was thinking six in my head still. Alright. Um, and then I have six times two plus three. Okay, so fifteen. Fifteen. I just put my points in your Yeah, six thing. times two plus three. So. Okay, and then size three residencies, I don't have any of them. I have six times one plus three, so nine points. Why is it times one, honey? It's times two. Oh, it is times two. Uh huh. So another 15? Yep. Size four residency, neither of us have any. Aqueducts! I got four points! Yeah. Steve got four. Points. Um, four okay. Points. Temples! Uh, this temple is worth nothing to me, but this temple is two points for every size two dormitory, and I have four of them, so it's worth eight points for moi. Oh, and then this one, if I have a four by four, it's worth ten, so I have 18 points total from temples. Oh, and then for me, it's shenanigans. It's shenanigans. So six points, because this is two per mm -hmm. yep. for that one. And then this one is one per star, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm-hmm. So Zero, seven 13. Plus 13. And this one is one point for every three money. And I have 29. Money? Yeah. So it's 27, so it's nine points. So yeah. So you have 22 points. 22 points. From temples. Okay, and then you get one point per dollar that you have. 29. Yeah, and I have 10. And then one point for every two stars you have. Steve has zero stars left. And I have... Five stars, so I will get two points. And then star cards, you've got all of them. I did get all of them. So it's 26 points. Um, Steve's so going all around. Right. 30, 34, 56, uh, 65, 85, uh, 91, 101. No, 11. Um, 54, 62, 72, that's a 10, so 82, 84. So Steve wins 111 to 84. I mean, those aqueducts. Oh, we saw that comic. <laughs> those aqueducts are a big swing. Yeah. But the tricky thing is, like, it really does impact the other stuff you can do. Yep. You can drop it. And that is City of Rome, and we have to catch up a chat. Uh, oh, uh, Kabuki said is say, it was saying that she played, uh, Space Base recently, and that it was pretty fun, it was a Machi Koro style game, 
Did we didn't stream Space Base? Did we stream Space Base? I'm pretty sure we did. No, I don't think we did. I think we just played with Tony. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, I didn't want to stream it because the table space would be huge. But it is Machicora, like, dice space you, like, build and dock stations in. Um, That's right, we did just play with Tony. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. Let's go and record these scores. Wow, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that is City of Rome, the great city of Rome in the U.S. Um, I still like it a lot. Um, I feel like two player is is viable. Um, mm-hmm. I think it works. It's it's pretty fast. It's way faster than uh, four player or three player because you're not waiting on everybody. Yeah. I think I like it better at three or four. And again, that's only after playing it two player once. And we did also play it wrong because we didn't have a hand. Um, I think I liked. I think I liked the save for the player count. I think uh, increasing the player count increases the like downtime, so you can like him and haw a little bit more. But I think it's. I think I liked it at four player and two player. Personally, yeah, it's true. One thing um, I noticed, I got a lot of cards from deck one, and that makes sense because half the cards are coming from deck one, whereas in three or four player, it's only one deck. Yeah, and the deck one cards are usually more point. They all have, yeah, the deck one cards, they have like a gold circle, and then they usually do more. So like my gold production gave me a point and a brick, and that came out really... Yeah. Um, um I'm going to actually change cameras. Uh, we do have Warsaw slash Capital. Yeah, it's sitting literally right there. Um, I'm going to go, Ichi is like baby gated, so she won't bother Xena, but it means that she also can't get water. Yeah. So I'm going to go... Um, and she's growled at me, and the only time Zina Ichi, the only time Ichi growls at you is when she wants something. Yep. That is, like, life requiring. Um, like, bathroom she's, breaks. She's pretty reliable in that regard. She's a very good dog. She only growls at you if her ball is trapped, which is life-related. Um, it is, it's life-threatening for the ball. For the ball, yeah, potentially. Um, she only growls at you if her ball is trapped, or if she is starving because you forgot to feed her ten hours ago. Or if there is, say, like, a stuffed toy up on a shelf that she really wants. That you put there two years ago. You know. It's happened. Life-threatening things. If, it, if it's dire, I won't say life-threatening, but as far as she's concerned, if it's dire, she'll growl. There, you can have some water. Meanwhile, my dog will growl at you. For everything. For everything. Um, she used to, Zina used to be very quiet, and she's recently found her voice, which is, yeah, I know, we're making fun of her, it's fine. We're not making fun of you. We're, we're not making fun of you, yeah, we were complimenting on how good of a dog you are. Drink some water, go on. Uh, yes, our dogs are our children, it's fine. It's a thing. It's a thing. I used to be like, no, they're not. They are. It's how we roll. Um, and that, I already said that was the great city of Rome. It's like how I But it's shrinks. great. I, I do, I do. I like wish it. they, I wish they hadn't kept, I wish they had kept the name as the city of Rome, not the great city of Rome, but that's, that's Maybe fine. there was already an English game called city of Rome, so they had to add great. Yeah, maybe. Make, make a market, I don't know. Do you want to bag these in separates? No. You feel it okay? Um, it's fine. Okay. Here's a single bag. Four different types of goods. I Maybe you just do three bags? Yeah, I can't even pretend. That hurts. I'm, um, I'm an open book. <sighs> yeah, so we haven't played uh, Capital slash Warsaw, which is about rebuilding uh, Warsaw after... I think World War One, maybe World War Two, um, but I know that a lot of people say this is somewhat similar. Um, regardless of that, considering we haven't played that yet, um, we both really like this one. I still like it. That was our third play, and I'm like, ooh, yeah, let's play again um, because I, I just, it's the drafting part is interesting. The placement allocation considerations are, like, interesting and spicy in the way that, like, you only have yourself to blame. 
um, which I love those kind of games. I love when when I can blame Steve for like taking a card, but really it's all my fault for like putting something someplace and not thinking about it. So um, I think we this game does a lot of things that we tend to like in the games that we play with each other, which is there's very clear direct interaction but only in a part of the game, and then the rest of the game is your fault. Like, if we were building to a shared city and could directly mess with each other by, like, placing things, I mean, it'd be a different game, but um, I don't think we would like it in the same way. Like, this is the interaction on where you go in the turn order is very direct, and which cards you draft is very direct, and that has a big impact on what you do for yourself, and those things are your own dang fault. Um, yeah. Um, and the other thing that I really like about it is it's very small form factor. Um, when we talk about, like, components and stuff, this box is pretty large for what it actually needs. Uh, this is a game that we could very easily put in the quiver. Mm -hmm. Um, the boards would fit in the quiver the way that I do the quiver. So this is, like, the box is not as travel friendly, but like it is travel friendly. And I don't know what the MSRP is going to be in the US, but this was 22 euros, which is like roughly 25, 26 dollars US, which is a good deal. I just, yes, you know, like that's a good price for this. Um, I don't know what the MSRP is going to be in the US, so I don't know what that's going to be translated. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward like the most complicated part of teaching was trying to teach the scoring yeah. which usually is a little easier because you can just like lay a fake scoring grid out and kind of talk about it but that's kind of the one thing that people trip up when they're playing for the first time 45 dollars yeah. is that from fun again because they charge up for importation importing um but um yeah so it says 10 and plus on the box. I think that just is from the small bets and the complication of teaching scoring, but like we, I, our nephew could learn this. He's probably a more advanced gamer um, than most younger kiddos, but there's that. It says 60 minutes on the box. We taught it. Um, we taught it, set it up, and played it in 60 minutes, but that was at two players. I feel like if you are playing at a higher player count, I would say it's like 15 minutes per player. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's drought, like the drafting and the player order choices will both sort of suck all of the AP from your group that's there. It's like, when the, when your turn really matters, there's definitely room to just take a long turn. Like, in the four player games we played, there were some long turns. Xena, I moved the baby gate, so Xena went out. Um, but yeah, it's... I don't know. Very, very interesting game. Um, Go. 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 Oh, it's, yeah, it's, Go. it's $40. Go. Okay. Go. That makes More. Sense. Leave your sister alone. Go on. Go. All the way. All the way. Where's your tree? Where's yours? Where's my woods? What's right there? There you go. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. All right, come back here, dopamine. I'm coming. I'm coming. Am I your dopamine? I guess. Am I your dopamine hit? <laughs> Thanks. Oh, Jaime says it's forty dollars, and Selena must be the forty-five dollar one. Um. Yeah. I don't know if I would pay forty for this, but it's okay. Yeah, it's tricky because, like, when you really like a game, the price does this. The the specific price doesn't hugely matter. You know, like, if it's on the borderline, when you're like, oh, I'd pay 30 for it, but not 40. This one, I think, having played it, I like it. I don't, I don't know if I would pay 40 for it. I don't know. I almost think that kind of like, um, uh, what is it called? Rise of Augustus? Uh-huh. You almost be willing to put it in a bag? <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't quite with the long tiles, but... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You play Rise of Augustus and then you play the Great City of Rome. Or you play the Great City of Rome and then you play Rise of Augustus because you've established the Empire of the of the Rome. Both games, not even close, not e don't even come close to filling up the boxes. You could put both games in the box. You could put both games in this box. You could just call it the Great Rise of Augustus Rome. City. City. You okay, H? 
Um, now they're doing the chewy dance. But they're doing the chewy dance in the living room where we can see them, so it's fine. We just don't want them doing the chewy dance where they, like, swap chewies and, like, quarter on each other when they're in a room where we can't see them. Um, close quarters with only one door. Yeah, that's the bedroom problem. used to have two doors, which, you know, was a, a good egress. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this game is, it's light enough for, like, a quick play. Um, but it's not so light that I would play it necessarily with casual gamers out of the yeah. gate. So it's kind of in, like, the medium category. It's on the lower scale in regards to, like, complexity for, like, the heavy gamers. But it's still interesting enough, I feel, for, um, heavy gamers if they're fine with, like, adjacency, uh, card placement being a factor and, like, drafting scoring. Um, the resource, uh, allocation method is very interesting, I think. I like it a lot. Um, it's very simple and straightforward. So, yeah. Um, and... I was gonna say, sorry, I was turning the dogs. Um, it, it just definitely feels like a game where if you're playing... If you've got a game night, you're playing this and something else. Like, it's not the only game you're playing. You're playing Rise of Augustus. Yeah, Obviously. Um, Sadly, this one doesn't go up to seven, but it goes move four, so I can. Why is it where this doesn't go to seven? I thought it goes to seven. No, it goes. No, it's seven it's... if you have a kiddo doing the bingo call. Ah, uh, it's six, and then if you have a little it's... participant. It might be five. I don't know. Wait, wait, why don't you just put that on the phone? Um. Yeah. Uh. I think we bought Rise of Augustus in the hopes that we could combine the second copy to make like a twelve player version. There's always hope. It says it right there on the side. The little circles. Other oh, side. There you go. Two to six. Two to six. It's seven players if you have one player being a bingo caller. Paralogic sold Rise of Augustus because he hates fun. <gasps> No, Rise of Augustus is one of the games that we have um, for not two-player. This is one of the games that, yes, you could play a two-player, but we don't really play a two-player. We keep it more for, like, playing three- and four-player games, or up to six, uh, because it's still a little strategic and interesting, and it was, like, our OG gamer bingo. And it plays quickly. Like, the box says half an hour, so six-player game in half an hour. Uh, it's, you know, if there's a bunch of people trapped in a cabin... Or whatever you can. You we used can to take it skiing a lot, um, because no matter how many people came skiing, the house only slept so many people, and then people would always like be playing video games or something. So we could always count on Rise of Augustus working for the player count we had. So I wanted to try this. It's not sweet enough. I don't like sour. I think it's a little too sweet. Oh, I don't like sour cider. Um, do you have any other things or thoughts to say about the Gracie of Rome? Um, I am glad, one, that when we were at Essen, we played it first mm -hmm. before getting it, mm -hmm. and then I'm also glad that we got it. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely appreciate it when we were able to play and sort of evaluate the games that are not the must-buys and then talk about them beforehand rather than just trying to scoop them all up and then ending up with too many games. And then plus we've played it, so we know, by the time we get it home, we know if we'd like it or not, we know how to play it. Yeah. Um, that's not a giant unknown, so that is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that is. And another thing that's kind of related, um, this year I focused more on very being very precise with what games we got in regards to research. We went in and we had a spreadsheet that had basically like rankings of games, and there was two different rankings in regards to like, I'm interested in this, and I've read the rules, but I just, I really need a demo to confirm it. And then there was like, I'm interested in this, I read the rules. But I don't think it's going to be good, so I want to play it to know. Um, and this was in the, I think this will work and I want to get it, but I want to play it first. So that kind of really helped with our purchase decisions. The other thing was is that it used to be traditionally I could go and get review copies. Um, and so I would push the press thing. And then it's always really awkward when you ask for a press copy and then they say no. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, I'll just buy it. This is, this is a little awkward. Um, but with a lot of European stuff, I have enough. I have enough subscribers, thank you, and, and patrons and supporters, that I can usually get copies, especially from European companies looking to branch out into the American market. Um, but 
that means that I usually get a lot of titles that I'm like obligated to review that I might not necessarily want um, or I'm obligated to just stream. We don't really do reviews uh, as much anymore. I still, I'm doing them though. Um, so, But if you're doing them, you're going to do them on games you want. Yeah, and so, and so that's the thing. So I feel less pressured to like stream stuff and so we really are being more considerate with what we're streaming and like enjoying and stuff like that. That being said, we do still have some sponsored streams this year that we'll be doing. Um, but I was also still very particular in what I said yes or no to on sponsored streams. So Do you have any sponsored streams yet? <sighs> no, not technically. Okay. Not technically. Futuropia was given to me by uh, uh, Bur- uh, I'm going to call him Burano, Bonacore, um, from Stronghold Games, but that's because I have been doing some, I was doing some like voiceover tutorial work for one of Ichi. Stronghold Games' is, uh, publishing partnerships, Everyone. and so um, I'm doing them in English, and so Stronghold is benefiting from those, and so as like a thing, Stronghold uh, has been providing me with copies of their new releases that I want. So it's very, very nice of them. Thank you um, for that. But on that delightful note, Kabuki Kid has asked, what shelf will it attain? The quiver. <laughs> Actually, maybe. Um, it, might, like sh- it might go in the quiver. I was thinking like a shelf two. I was thinking a shelf three. Shelf three? Oh. Yeah, I think this is our first shelf three uh, of the Essen. I did put Selena on shelf three. I think that Selena might be a little bit more of a shelf two. Um, but okay. it doesn't fit on shelf two right now. Um, I need to do some shenanigans. Uh, but I think that this is very comfortably on, or sorry, Selena was on, yeah, is is on shelf three right now, but I think it is more in between. And when it, they're in between, I usually put them lower. Um, so I feel like this is more solidly a shelf three. Um, I enjoy this and it gives me the like satisfaction and enjoyment and wanting to play again. Um, mm-hmm. similar to Crown of Amara. And like Whistle Stop and Bunny Kingdom, um, and Happy Pigs and Falon Rouge. Uh, so those are the games that we usually have on on shelf three. So oh right, shelf three. Sorry, I keep forgetting about shelf one. Shelf one. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a shelf three for me. I that was the shelf I was looking at. Yeah. Quite see, oh, see, I can see shelf one. But yeah, shelf one for usually you is it's directly by the... behind the laptop. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'd say about this is usually after I play it, I want to play it again and try different stuff because there's mm-hmm. so many ways to score points. And I'm interested to see how the cards come out differently. And yeah, because it's all about the cards and the multiplicative scoring. Like if you can, this is one of the first games. I think my third. Yeah, this is the first game I played where I actively tried to place the entertainment buildings so they would touch multiple mm. uh, neighborhoods, and I did get a good number of points from them. I also got points from other things too, but it definitely helped me in things. Yeah. Um, it helped that there weren't three other people all snatching up neighborhood cards before I could get them. Um, which is something, it feels like in two-player you can get more of what you, like you can get one of, of the four cards, probably one of them will be the thing that you want. Whereas in four-player you might get nothing you want. So it plays differently. Yeah. Um, Kabuki Kid asks for a refresher on how many shelves there are. There are s- Six. six shelves, but there's seven ratings. So there's the floor, which is shelf zero. The floor means it's being sold, or it has not been streamed or played yet. So we will not put a game on a shelf until it has been either played or streamed. So games that we're waiting to stream, they're on the floor, which is why Warsaw is on the floor and has been on the floor since Gen Con. Um, no, I got worse out at Origins. Origins. <laughs> yeah, it's an Origins one. It's an Origins release. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't really so want to good. play Detective. Detective I is know. just down there going, hey, you'll love me. You'll love me. Yeah, we also got Detective. Detective. Um, Portal. Ignacy sent us Detective. Just out of the blue, there was just a game of, of Detective, so we need to play that. Um, so there's the floor, which is we are selling you, we are getting out, rid of you, or... We haven't streamed you yet. We need to stream you. So most all of the Essen releases are on the floor right now, uh, unless we've streamed them, which we streamed 10 this week. So that helped a lot with, with getting stuff out. Um, then we have um, shelf number one, which is the... Um, holding pattern? Shelf, it's holding right? pattern. It's like, uh, we want to play you before we sell you, but we're leaning more towards selling you. And at a certain point, if it's been on shelf one for long enough and we haven't played it, it just gets sold. 
I occasionally just get fed up with it and I will like put everything on shelf one into a thing and take it to a game store to sell. Then there's shelf two. Shelf two is a very interim shelf. Things move from shelf two quite a bit. So shelf two is we've played you, we liked you, but we're not really sure about you, so we want to play you again, uh, or we might just sell you. So playing again determines if it goes, it stays in the collection or we sell it again. Or we um, like playing you, but we don't know how many more times we want to play you. Like Pendant of Legacy also probably doesn't only fits on that shelf, but like Pendant of Legacy is on there. No, you're looking at the wrong shelf again. Shelf two is. <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking. Cult. Oh, no. Yeah, I was talking about. So shelf two is stuff that we want to play again before we get rid of. So Rat Cult is on shelf two right now. Um, Lowlands is on shelf two. Um, there are also games that we've, like, done research on and reviewed or, like, they're older titles that we've, like, hunted down and we haven't had a chance to play yet, but we put a lot of, like, effort into getting them or, like, researching them, and so those are on shelf two as well. Like, they haven't been played technically, but, like, we did a lot of research and, and seeing if we would like it. So we have things like Goa, Traders of Genoa, um, Tigris and Euphrates, which we've played half of. <laughs> uh, cities? Um, cities. Oh, Robber Knights. Robber Knights, which we played once. We need to play it again. Robber Knights was pretty interesting. Um, Food Truck Champion. I really liked Food Truck Champion, but I want to try to get, play it again um, and maybe stream it. So that's what Shelf 2 is. Shelf 2 also has like a little bit of like, maybe we'll stream this. Like Kepler uh, 30... 42. 42 is on Shelf 2 because um just need to play it again. We've streamed it and we've played it twice. And we do like it, but it like does this thing to my brain, and I'm not sure if after a certain number of plays, we'll just like have, like the way that the in the entropy system works is mm -hmm. just not going to be as interesting. Though. Then we have shelf three. Shelf three is yes, we are holding on to you. You are not in immediate danger of being sold, but um, it's a game that we do enjoy, and those are the ones we play less frequently. Um, or, like, we have for very specific reasons. Like, so, Triplanetary is up there. Triplanetary, yeah. Sometimes you need vector space game. But it's a very niche game. Like, Mice and Mystics is on there. It's a very niche game for us. Welcome 2 is on there. It's a very niche game. Like, when we have, you know, a large excess amount of people. Um, so there's that. There's also games that we enjoy, but, like, not, like, love, love, love. Like, Heaven and Ale is on there. Um, which I have a feeling after we play Heaven and Ale a few more times, it's going to go. So there's that. Then we have shelf four. Shelf four is the shelf of like, we really like these games and we do not see them leaving anytime soon. These are the games that we typically recommend to people, like hands down. These are the games that when I am at work at the game shop, these are the games that I'm usually um, recommending to people or having the shop order so that I can sell them to people. So that's shelf three. Yeah, that's stuff like... Uh, the River. Like, <laughs> we have a selection of our like, sort of like almost casual abstracts or like casual... Like, thing, like, not quite abstract, but, like, Junk Orbit, um, mm -hmm. the, the Flower Bird one. No, that's just, like, that's, I've just, it's more of, like, a weight section. No, it I know, just I'm just saying, like, there's that's, a lot of abstracts. but I mean, like, that weight is, oh, we yeah. have a little section for that weight, like, number nine, um, I can't see them all from here, but, like. Uh, number nine, Saikatsu, Saikatsu um, Baron Park, Junk know. Orbit, uh, Baron Park is currently on shelf three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's shelf four. Rampage is on shelf four, and st some of Steve's war games are on shelf four. So Kabuki could ask specifically where Steve's war games are. Steve has a section of war games um, on shelf four that are games that he has done a lot of research for, and he really likes them, or he's played them, and he knows he likes them, and that. He also has some war games hanging out on shelf three, which he's done some research and he's got, um, and he's played, but they're like kind of like not as beloved, so. Um, and some of those, he has like a mental timer on his own going on whether or not yep. he gets them or holds on to them. But it's one of those where if like he buys a new war game and he really, really loves it, it will bump off something from shelf three. Yeah. So there's that. Then we have shelf five, which is like the games that we most love slash care about. Um, so we have like the 10th anniversary Ticket to Ride and we have like an original from the 80s Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Um, we have the Tok uh, Tokaido Collector's Edition. And then we've got, oh, Panamax. Panamax we've got Panamax. We've got Ooh, Imperial um, Settlers. Imperial Settlers. 
Fields of Arl. Kings of Ernstein. Can we play Kings of Ernstein? Yeah, see, but, uh, so many times. I offered to play with you. Oh, really? Um, okay. We've got Nutrunner. We've got Steam. We've got Robinson Imperial Crusoe. Imperial Assault is up there. Um, Automania. Um, above and Below, but like I think Above and Below needs to move down to Shelf 3. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gold so, West. Oh, Belfort. I Gold love Belfort. West, Belfort. So Belfort. much. Every time I want to play Belfort, it's like, well, we don't have enough time to play Belfort. It takes an hour and a half. Yeah, so that's shelf. Um, Love Belfort. That's shelf five, and then shelf six is our oversized box titles that either are would would be on like shelf five or four, but they're just so big. Yeah. So we don't hold on to any oversized large box games for very long if they're gonna move on, um, because they're just so large. So, um, all of, like, the really big games that we have up high are the ones that, like, we definitely like. And that's, so... that's, like, Millennium Blades, Zaya, Eclipse, Dominion. Lords of Waterdeep. Lords of Waterdeep. Loop and Chewy. Loop and Chewy and Loop and Louie. Can't Stop is up there. Vortex. All of our Dominion is up there. We have, like, seven or eight expansions and of Dominion. And Galaxy Defenders. Galaxy like, Defenders. Like we also... There's another war games. There's a couple other war games that Steve has up there, and then we also have all of our oh, player yeah. maps. My conflict, my conflict to heroes, second edition, Awakening the Bear with the um, solo expansion and firefight generator expansion. Yeah, and then all of our, our all of our player maps are up there. So yeah, that is a full, very detailed description of all our shelves. <laughs> um, and then we have our small game shelves, which are on either side. Um, and they are all, they're mostly just categorized by, um, size and really the small games aren't, they're, they're not ranked in any way. Like if we still have the small game, it's really good. I am very brutal about getting rid of small yeah. games very they, quickly. They accumulate. Yeah. And so like, there's a whole bunch right here on this upper shelf that are waiting to see if they get in the shelves. So it's like, if they, if a small game gets on a shelf spot, we're good, but there's only so much small games we can have. I really like that we're very limited in how many small games we have. It's because we only have so much room for small games, so that really helps. Um, and then we have like a little shelf in the corner that nobody ever sees, which is games that we have purchased or procured that are waiting to go to people. Mm -hmm. So we have Christmas gifts for our nieces and nephews down there, and my mom, and my sister-in-law, and stuff like that. So like the next time we see people, we will... We always check that shelf to see if there's anything that we're like needing to give to somebody. Then we have a giveaway shelf in the corner, which is just games that are like newer and shrink that are to be given away. Um, and then we have the built-in, which has our beloved two-player games. So all of the games in here are two-player only. Um, so that's that, and then we have like my Pokemon and role-playing yeah. games. There's a couple there. of solo games in there that will like play two-player, like Coffee Roaster. Yeah. Um, oh, and can we use the Attic Games? And then we have the Attic Games! Oh my god, we have the um, And now we have Office Games. So I paint minis and I'm, I'm like set up to do painting tutorials for different board games and like companies have sent me games, but I got sick and then I got a job and it's like this whole thing. So those have now been to my studio slash office waiting to be painted. Um, so there's that. And then we have an Attic Collection. We don't have basement games yet, although we do have my old Warhammer in the basement. Oh, I think that counts. So the attic is um, family games. We call it the Family Game Day uh, pile. I ran an event in California called Family Game Day where I had a bunch of family games donated by via various publishers, and I hosted events at like local libraries or play spaces where people could come and like we would teach them games and they could just hang out and play. Sometimes that turned into a babysitting service, so it's very hard to do without a lot of volunteers, but exists. Um, we like the idea of that, so we've held on to those games, and often I'll go through those games and like we'll donate to libraries or schools. Um, but I do make sure that there's still good games up there, so those games are games that we ourselves are not interested in playing just us or specifically, but they're still really good games and they're really good examples and they're really good casual or light games. And so if we're invited to a party with, like, not hardcore gamers, we have them in tubs and we can just bring a tub. Um, or if we're hosting something, we can just bring a tub. I'm also launching a convention uh, with uh, Granite Game Summit. It's called Stumptown Game Summit. And those games are going to seed part of the game library for our family game section. 
So that's those games, and those include Normal Ticket to Ride, there's Tesoro, there's Broom Service, there's um, One Night Ultimate Werewolf is up there, um, Potion Explosion is up there. A full blue tub of Haba games. Yeah, like we all have all age ranges. Yeah, we have a tub full of Haba games that Haba donated. So, yeah. Um, Paralogic says the storage under the stairs games. Uh, those are where we keep our sex toys. <laughs> Still games. <laughs> under the stairs is we actually have a closet that's under the stairs, but that holds um our my indoor power tools and also my indoor power tools. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, hi, Mom Gamer. <laughs> um, um, yeah. We also no longer have a random vanity tool cabinet mm. in the bathroom because we ripped mm-hmm. that out. We turned that into a closet. But that did not have games on it. I'm thinking, there's like, I'm trying to think of the places in our house we don't have games. The car usually has a game or two in it. The car currently has no games in it, which has led us to have a problem. But we bought cribbage to go in it, and Iota needs to go back in it. Well, it has Oregon Trail, but not the card game, the video game. Um, uh, Kabuki Kid asks, how many games do you have multiple copies of for whatever reason? Stuff like Circle Wagons, for example. We uh, Oh yeah, we also have Quivers. We have a Quiver that has like grab-and-go mm-hmm. games that we just love. There's a really good selection of two-player games, and also um, we have a couple games that go up to six in the Quiver. Um, they're mostly all card games. See, there's a circle of wagons in my backpack. Or there's a circle. Not in my backpack, it needs to go back in. There's a circle of wagons in each of our backpacks. There's a circle of wagons in the quiver. There's a circle of wagons in the house. Oh. And I think I put one in the car. What other games do we have multiples of? We got we got Ticket an extra ride. copy of of Easter Island. That one was. Uh, yeah, we have two copies of that was one. Hopefully, Rise favorite. of Augustus. Two copies of Easter Island. Two copies of Little Prince. Uh, make me a planet. Which Little Prince build me a planet is part of the uh, miniature market Black Friday sale. Ooh. Um, we love that game. That was so our tile placement. That was our tile placement game before King Domino. I don't own a second copy of King Domino yet. That's a lie. I do. It's right there. Um. But that we're giving it to our nephew. Um, yeah. It's spoken for. It's spoken for. But I want to buy the giant version of King Domino Ticket and put it ride. in the the collection, the library collection. Uh, Ticket to Ride New York, we've almost... Oh, no, we did buy a second one. We have two copies of Ticket to Ride New York, just in case we ever need to give it to somebody. Um, oh, no, and then I bought another copy of Ticket to Ride New York and gave it to my mom. Um, but, yeah... Smaller, smaller gateway games that can be given as gifts we usually get. We have two copies of Welcome To because one of them is the mini version. This is true. Yes. We used to have um, a lot of copies of Welcome To because I worked for that company. Oh, um, that was the games in the basement. The um, I was right. We used to have Deepwater games deep in the water basement. Deepwater Backstock mm-hmm. was in the back. Was the the Deepwater games replacement and Backstock was in the basement. Was in the basement. Also, uh, my prototypes are mostly up in the attic in my sort of like game work area. I think I've got like f- fifteen prototypes and like a my old level ninety nine six game Kickstarter box. So those are those are also technically attic games. Herologic says that uh, they think they only have two copies of Gloomhaven. You know, sometimes like if you've got one already set up and someone else calls you on the phone, is like, well, I need to play Gloomhaven. You want to grab your ready to go Gloomhaven rather than yeah putting away we, the one that's set up. We have a couple copies. Uh, we have duplicates between Family Game Day and our collection. Mm-hmm. So games like Rhino Hero, Roll for It, um, Ticket to Ride. Uh, There's a couple games that we have like multiple versions of to combine them, like Pick a Pig, Pick a Dog. We have the entire Pick a Pick series. Pick a Polar Bear. Um, yeah. Skull and Roses, we have the black and the red. I don't know if that counts. We have both, like... Yeah, well, Railroad Inc., we have the red and the blue. Like, it's not yeah, quite I multiple don't, copies. I don't but... know if I count that. Um, the giant Takanoko is living in the built-in. Because it's very nice. It barely fits. It, like, pushes against the glass. Um, we've played it, I think, twice. So, it's very big. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, have we made a pocket king domino? Two and a half inch square box. I like That's that idea. That's a great idea. 
Um, we do not own any trivia games anymore. I used to own a couple of trivia games. Oh, we do have Timeline Challenge. We have Timeline in the upstairs attic in the Family Game Day boxes. But um, I am really bad at trivia. Isn't Chrononauts also smell? Chrononauts is not trivia at all, honey. But isn't that like the time that things happen? No, but there's no history. It's not, it's, no. It's just a time, it's not a trivia game. I need to play that with you because it's one of my like favorite games from back in the day. Um, we used to have Wits and Wagers. We no longer have Wits and Wagers. Um, yeah. If we're going to play party games, we usually play things like Ice Cool or... Pitch Car. Pitch Car or Number 9, which I now can play with 12 players. Um, Welcome to... Uh, yeah. Bazaar Wizard is Kabuki Kid's favorite trivia game. I'm just really bad at trivia games. Really bad. So, yeah. Um, I used to try to play trivia games. I just can't play anymore. Um, the only tri- mastermind was the only trivia game that I could play, and that was because we had a copy when I was a kid, and I have a photographic memory. So. Every time you play, you just don't play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. All right. Now all that right. we've gone in detail of the location of all the games in our house. Um, I am going to go read the rules for Spaceport, which is the John Butterfield, one of the four-player space game GMG is working on, and just emailed me to say that they are getting ready to start sending out. Um, that would that would have been a, a Gen Con or an SN game for me had it made it, but I was not. So I'm going to go read the rules for that uh, and see if it's up my alley. I am going to go play Pokemon, because Pokemon came out today let's go uh let's go see me um and i um mastermind didn't have eggs it, it did have some trivia but it also oh no you're thinking of mastermind the peg one no it's not mastermind what is it it's like mind something mind masters maybe mm. it's like a black box with like lightning on it uh, it was trivia card puzzly it was like logic puzzles it wasn't trivia it was logic puzzles that's never mind it had things like you're in a locked room and somebody's dead, but there's a puddle on the floor, like one of those things. Um, oh, I used to have books of those mm-hmm. as a kid. Oh, man. Okay. My favorite one of those was it was like it was like a little like crime scene puzzle logic book. And it was there was somebody in a shop and they were shot at by somebody outside. Are you it, giving away the answer? Yeah, I'm giving away the answer. Okay. And it had the, they had the spider web pattern of the bullet holes in the glass and they told you based on the the pattern in the hole which one went in from the inside one went in from the outside and the solution was the one that went in first was the one that spider webbed first and the one that went in second the spider webs hit the other one so that was one i totally didn't get but it was like i don't know i like i like visual think outside the box puzzle things like that because it was like oh of course i don't know so i like those kind of puzzles i want to go play pokemon I only played for like an hour today before I fell asleep. Um, you had a snuggle buddy. I had a snuggle buddy and I had an early morning and a late night. Yeah, so, you cut a Xena. Yep. Um, I'm going to go play Pokemon. Let's go Eevee. And I got an Eevee and I named him. I named her because she's a she, Stevie. And she is my buddy and now. She rides on your head. She rides on my head now. So Stevie rides on my head, and I don't like the look of the female characters because their shorts are too short, and I don't like their hair, so I'm playing a boy character because you can pick the appearance is, pol- is gendered, and you don't get to pick pronouns. So I'm playing I'm playing a girl named Tar, or I'm playing a boy named Tar with a girl, Evie, named Stevie. It's fine. It's, my, it's fine. It's my happy place. It's a happy place, yep. Yeah. Pokemon! And I got the ball joy controller, which is entirely stupid, but I love it. It's, so. It gives you joy. It does give me joy. Alright, thank you for watching the stream. Ah, Pikachu Twitches! Um, thank you for watching the stream uh, and hanging out with us this long, because we finished playing like an hour ago, almost 40 minutes ago. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. And then you'll be notified sometimes by YouTube. Or you can just follow us on Twitch. 
Um, which also sometimes notifies. Mm. Uh, if you're watching in this future, in the future, thank you for watching this long, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, you should come hang out with us on chats. The next time we stream will be Tuesday! And my Patreon supporters get to vote on what game we are streaming. And it was really close, but it looks like Blackout Hong Kong is pulling ahead. But polling does not end until Saturday morning at 10 a.m., which is tomorrow morning, before I go to work, incidentally. So, Blackout's probably going to win. So What's Blackout, in second place? Second place... Uh, second place was either Casters of the Golf or... Um, it wasn't Ceylon. Ceylon was not winning. Ceylon was in last. Don't mind me. Who's voting for Captains of the Golf? I cannot remember if the Golf knew what the what was the other one. What's the other one? Uh, Captains of the Golf Gugong. and Gugong were tied, but I just voted for Captains of the Golf. Yeah. So, um, it's likely that we're gonna play Blackout Hong Kong unless people go and vote for Captains of the Golf so Steve uh, gets to play it. And people have been really hyped about Blackout, so I'm... John's pretty excited to play Blackout too. So yeah. we'll be here Tuesday to play Blackout Hong Kong, most likely. Um, and then Thursday, Thanksgiving Day here in the U.S., we will be streaming all day um, because we're not going to Thanksgiving with anybody. We're doing games given with you all, so we're just gonna hang out all day and stream all day. So if you want to avoid your family, you can tune in. Um, and hang out with us, and we're going to play whatever we want. And right now, it's looking like we're probably going to play, like, some Zaya. Uh, we're probably going to play some, like, Zularetto, Aquaretto. Uh, we might play some... What was the other one we decided on yesterday? Rattle Battle, Grab the Loot! Rattle Battle, Grab the Loot, yep. Um, and I was thinking, tonight, we should play... There's so many things I want to play. We could play Pick a... Pick a pig or pick a dog. We yeah, could play a, we could be like a massive pick a game. We'll we'll probably um, play some like silly games. That, we'll play some small stuff. We'll play yeah. some big stuff in between the small stuff. But I'm like stocking our fridge with snacks and food so we don't have to leave the house except for to like walk the dogs. Um, we're recording special like we're not here videos. I think it's a thing. Games giving is a thing, and we're gonna be here and we're gonna be streaming. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And then um, we are going to give away some of those games on our. Yeah, we'll give away some of our games on our game shelves. Sure. We give away shelves. But we should play the games we're giving away. Like, we should play Easter Island. It's so good. It's so good. It's and then so give it good. away. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, my uh, little friends make me pull it, build me a planet, okay. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So tune in, and we'll do the giveaways on, like, a week delay, so we'll stream them, and then, like, if you're not watching live, you can you can still enter kind of thing. Yeah. We'll do something like that. Um. Cool. Awesome. I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, we're going to play games, paint minis, and work. Because I work on the weekends. It's weird. Um, I work weekends again now. And I've got next week off from work. And I am debating crafting some of my solo games. Like playing in the morning or something. That's not why you said you were taking off work. No, but I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking about it. And I'm thinking I might. I'm gonna go play Pokemon. Okay, bye! Okay, bye.